For those of you who don't care much about gel ball or gel fire, let's answer an important question right out the gate. This is the Nerf gel fire mythic, without the hopper attached and with a removable front barrel, which means that you can actually front load rival rounds and fire them with whatever performance. No modification required. And a quick chronograph test, 50. Nice. And this is the new Nerf Gel Fire Legion with the same front adapter. How well does this shoot rival? And the answer is a lot worse. 37.7. 41. 36.4. Well, I'm already disappointed. This video is sponsored by Into the AM. What's up everyone? My name is Brett and welcome back to the Gel Fire Zone, where it's all gel fire all the time. <laughs> and if you're new to my channel, no, this is not actually a gel ball channel. I am just talking about things that are slightly related to foam flinging, because today we are talking about the newest Nerf Gel Fire product, that is the Legion. I picked mine up off of Amazon for 35 United States dollars. That is its retail price. So now I have it. And here is the box. This is a spring powered pistol that fires gel fire rounds. Spring action, no batteries included, no batteries needed. 130 round hopper, we'll look at that in a second. It's got slam fire and it's also got a trigger lock. Instructions are also included, very small eye protection as well, and then you do get 5,000 rounds included. None of them are pre-hydrated when they come in the blaster. And then of course, the main attraction, the Legion and its teeny tiny hopper. This is kind of funny, like in one way, I think is adorable. In another way, what the heck? Of course, for size comparison, this is the hopper that comes with the Nerf Gel Fire Mythic. It advertises holding 800 rounds, but through my testing, I found you could hold at least 1,200 in here. This one that comes with the Legion, well for one doesn't have a little gel fire sticker on the front, advertises a holding 130. Though through my testing as well, I found you could probably load up to 200. And of course it sits up top just like that. And that is all you get in the box. And as you may have caught on in the beginning, when it comes to performance, the gel fire Legion is not as powerful overall as the Mythic. And the Mythic wasn't that powerful to begin with. It doesn't really hurt that much. Or maybe it's because this shirt helps soften the blow. This shirt from today's sponsor. I like wearing shirts. After all, it's a socially acceptable thing to do. And I love bright and vibrant shirts, just like I enjoy bright and vibrant blasters. Which is why I'm happy to announce that this video is sponsored by Into the AM. Into the AM is a team of artists and creators developing premium apparel from comfortable fabrics and eco-friendly inks. You'll find bold and colorful designs for t-shirts, tank tops, and hoodies. Or if you're looking for more basic colors, they've got you covered there too. You can also find beanies and hats. As a man who wears hat, this is good. If you're looking to replace some of your old apparel, I recommend checking out their bundles. And to save even more money, you can use my code BERT at checkout to save an extra 10% off your order. I am so glad they agreed to use that discount code. Check them out using the link below. And thanks to Into the AM for sponsoring this video and supporting foam flinging creators like myself. As I mentioned in the beginning, this is the same front lug that you get with the Mythic, which means that the barrel on the Mythic can be added to the Legion, which I think looks kind of cool. I mean, this is really like a silenced pistol kind of aesthetic, but they don't include it. And the only place you can currently get this barrel is with the Mythic. So I guess that's an $80 barrel right there. <gasps> Neat. And as mentioned on the box, it's a spring powered blaster, no batteries required that can also slam fire. Meaning you pull back, auto retracts forward, pull the trigger, and you shoot a gel ball into your room that disappears and you'll find it in maybe a month. But if you hold down the trigger and then forward, you can slam fire, which has grown on me a little bit. I'm gonna stop doing that. This is gonna be a mess. And I'll show you later what that testing looks like outside. Removing the barrel that doesn't come with this thing. Talking about the blaster overall, I think the aesthetic is decently appealing. Similar to the Mythic, there are definitely things I like about it and things I don't love about it. Because the handle does not require a battery, it is a little thinner and I actually find it to be pretty comfortable. The Mythic wasn't uncomfortable, I just think this one is even better. There's a little bit of a potential pinch point right here. I just wonder if maybe someone else's hand would find it a little bit less comfortable. The blaster itself is not too big, yet at the same time, if I once again bring out the Mythic, you can see it's actually like almost the same length, 
with the Mythic stock in the retracted position and no barrels attached. The colors as well are similar to the Mythic, clearly defining that gel fire line. You've got the red, you've got this off-white, the gray, and the orange accents. This color scheme, not too bad. And then of course, the only paint you've got on this right side is Nerf Pro gel fire and nothing on the left, which is actually the exact same as the Mythic, and I realize now it doesn't say Legion on this blaster anywhere. And the safety is once again right on the bottom underneath the trigger well. Putting on a larger hopper would mean that you would get more ammo capacity, which is something most of us would prefer. That's where we can start getting into some of the cons of this blaster. Of course, it is going to work. That would be something to definitely note uh, and get real angry about if it didn't. But I'm gonna show you. <laughs> Holy smokes, it wiggles. That's some wiggle jiggle right there. Yikes. I noted before in my Gelfire Mythic review that I did seem to find two different types of hoppers in two different blasters, where one seemed to fit better than the other as far as snugness. This is a whole different level. I don't know if you would call it unacceptable or just embarrassing. Maybe both. But don't worry, the teeny 130 hopper does fit on the Mythic just fine. It looks kind of odd in that way. And no, it doesn't rattle around because it's tiny. But while I've got the Mythic out again, another weird trend that they've continued. There are two rails on the Mythic where you could mount stuff. I think these are rival style and hyper style uh, Picatinny rails, so they're not actual Picatinny. This bottom one, it doesn't make sense. This top one is too small and the hopper's right here, so it doesn't make sense. Well, the Legion said, hold my gel fire rounds, because it did it as well. Right here might make a little bit more sense for where you could mount stuff, I suppose, but once again, it's just super tiny. They couldn't take it, you know, advantage of more of this real estate for a full rail across the bottom. And then the ultimate what the heck is right here. There's rail on my handle. What is it doing there? Can you take it off, please? There aren't any attachments currently for the Nerf Gelfire line, and I think it really detracts from the overall look. Firing the Gelfire Legion is actually not that bad of an experience. While I did have a lot of jamming issues with the Mythic, I didn't find them the same way in the Legion. That's good. What I did find in the Legion, and I confirmed this with Buff Daddy Nerf over at Blaster Hub, was double feeding. This blaster seemed to double feed every fourth or fifth shot. Now, was that inherently a bad thing? I guess not, but you're obviously going to see limited performance if that's the case. The pullback tab on the back, I still think could have been refined. This is an odd choice, I think, because while they've made stuff, nerf, like a disruptor or a strong arm where it has a top handle that you would prime back, for some reason, this is just like a tab. If this is designed for being 14 and up, don't you want more real estate for people to grab onto? Because you don't really grab just the sides that actually could put risk of you pinching your hands in between these little bars. Is this the best they could go for? But at least it still feels strong enough like it's not gonna break in my hands. Of course, your experiences may vary, but I found the Gelfire Mythic to fire up to 150 FPS. It really seemed to depend on what Gelfire rounds were firing through it because sometimes they were larger than others, even though I thought I soaked them all in the same water for the same amount of time. And then the Legion came in a little bit lower than that. Sometimes they were comparable, but I think on average, the Legion was shooting a little bit softer. So for many of you, once again, the interpretation might be, this is yet another underpowered Nerf gel ball blaster sold at a premium price. Hang on a second. I'm looking at it right now and it's already reduced in price. Now it's $30, 14% off. I bought this like a week ago. Dang it, you're telling me I could have waited for the, ah. Well, it's got mod potential, right? It's a spring-powered blaster. Well, once again, I'm going to offer up some of Buff Daddy Nerf's research because he cracked this open and offered a very cautious do not open unless you wish bad things upon yourself because it seemed like it was a doozy to get in there and I don't know what kind of mod potential it's actually going to give. But as far as gel ball is concerned or gel fire, it's the second best gel fire blaster of all time. It doesn't even fire rival that well. I'm seriously disappointed by that. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Let me know what you think about this blaster. What future blasters from this line, if any, would you be excited about? Or are you ready for this line to actually end? And thanks again to Into the AM for sponsoring this video. And now I will go off and live my 007 Nerf Gelfire fantasies. <laughs>
man.